All right, y'all. Let's talk about soft goods. This is chapter five in the book. Um, so soft goods are all your curtains and drapes and drops. So we have curtains and backdrops are your typical soft goods. When we think about soft goods, we think about um, the black curtains that hang both above the stage. Those are borders, right? Those borders are hanging at the top edges. This is within a proscenium theater, right? At the top edges and they mask or hide um, lighting instruments, other fixtures, other scenery that might be hanging up inside of the fly system. So those are your borders. Those are that horizontal part. The vertical black curtains are called legs. So you'll have legs on the sides, borders across the top, and they together become like a leg and border set that frame the stage. Okay. Um, so those are the ones that you'll see most often on any blank theater stage. Your borders are the horizontal pieces. Your legs are the vertical ones. Those are typically going to be drapes in this drapes versus drops binary. Okay. So your drapes are curtains. They are typically one fabric, the same material for the whole piece. Um, often they're velour and velour is that fuzzy black fabric, right? So it's like velvety, but less shiny. And um, although it could be velvet, if it's more shiny, it's probably a velvet kind of material. But velour, typically black velour, is used for those masking curtains because it absorbs light really well. Um, and then the other kind of soft good category of soft goods are drops. So those are muslin or canvas, and they're generally painted or printed for a specific production. So drapes are just giant curtains, usually made of a single fabric. Drops are usually a specific painted or otherwise decorative uh, object, right? Curtain object. So masking is what we call the general category of most of the time black curtains that hide the backstage area, other backstage equipment that we don't want to see or care about looking at. Okay. So when you look in the plan view, right? So we're looking top down onto the stage, the way that the placement of masking is determined is by checking our extreme sight lines, right? So sight lines are, if I'm sitting at the, in the audience of the theater and I look to the left and the right, what do I see in the wings? That's my sight line, okay? So when we set up masking, we're trying to use rows of curtains to hide the backstage area and we do that by checking those plans against what would be the visual line of sight for that audience member in one of those extreme seats. And we know that if it's cool for the extreme seats, then it's gonna be fine for the seats in the middle of the house as well. So that's what masking is and how it works. Um, we also have some specialty curtains. So we don't have just the like black curtains that hide the backgrounds, right? Um, one of them is a psych uh, or a cyclorama. So that this is a large light colored, I know it looks like a rainbow, but that's all the lighting of this particular image, right? So it is a large light colored seamless muslin typically, or sometimes a fire, um, a fireproof or a inherently fire retardant material, uh, seamless backdrop. And it's used to imitate the sky or to take light in a variety of colors, right? These are often a very expensive investment for a theater because it does come as this large seamless piece. And as a consequence, we're really careful with our psych to, to prevent damage, all of that kind of stuff. Um, we generally ask performers not to touch it. Uh, we ask technicians not to touch it because the oils on your fingers can build up over time and cause damage to it. It is also super easy to like accidentally run something into it and get a pucker or a dent. And those are hard to get out of this giant piece of fabric, right? Um, so that is a cyclorama, typically abbreviated as a psych, CYC. Um, we also have 
a another specialty type of curtain, which is a scrim. Okay, so a scrim is it's kind of like a fishnet. It's kind of like a like a cheesecloth, right? Uh, and it, so it has this relatively open weave. You can see it down here. That the white is the back the background behind it and the black are the threads. So what the scrim does is creates this magic trick where if you light it at a steep angle from the front, it appears solid. Um, and when you light a person or a figure or a whatever behind it, it appears transparent, okay? So you can see that pretty clearly in this example, right? Over on the side here, this is lit from the front and you do not see anyone through it. But then in this image, we can see clearly this actor through it because it's lit from behind. This is a trick that works with any, like in your house with the screens on your windows, or if you have like a perforated metal door um, as your screen door, like I do on the front of my house, you'll notice this effect, right? Where during the daytime, if you're outside, you can't see through it very well into the house because the volume of light is greater outside. Whereas at night, when you have lights on inside, you can see straight through that door. This is the same concept, except it is a fabric that we use specifically for to achieve this effect theatrically. So travelers, the travelers are um, any soft goods, any curtains that are on a track, a traveler track, they, they have little cars that they sit in on this track that allows the curtain to open and close horizontally, right? So the fly system, which we'll talk about in a minute, would allow a curtain to open and close by raising and lowering, and a traveler track allows that curtain to open and close side to side. So those um, are frequently operated um, from the stage level. Oftentimes you'll have a mid traveler. So you'll have legs and then you'll have a traveler in the middle of the stage or a traveler right in front of the psych. So you have an option to uh, close that middle traveler and have less depth to the stage or open that traveler, have more depth to the stage or close a traveler in front of a psych so that you're looking at a black curtain instead of a big white surface. So typically you'll see a traveler or two in a standard package for a proscenium theater space. You'll also sometimes see the main curtain of a stage setup as a traveler. Um, sometimes it'll be a traveler and it'll be rigged to fly. So you have both options to like close the curtains this way or to fly the whole thing out. But in a case where you don't have fly space, a traveler would be the way to have a curtain that can open and close during the production because without that additional fly loft, you don't have any place to go up. The only thing you can do is open and close left to right. So we have cut drops, which are another specialty curtain. So we talked about drops, right? Those are painted muslin. Curtains, typically they're, they're depicting some sort of a scene, right? Um, they, there are also cut drops where you take that painted scene curtain and you cut holes in it. Sometimes you reinforce those areas um, where like it's open, like see how you can kind of see the, the holes that have been cut in this tree, right? You can reinforce that with scrim sometimes to stabilize it so that, or with netting to stabilize it so that it doesn't warp and twist. But the idea with the cut drop, right, is that you get this illusion of depth and you're able to create layers, scenic layers using flat surfaces, right? Flat curtain surfaces to create those layers and depth um, and that's really useful if you're trying to do uh, like a ballet, right? Where you have many, many scenes and you only have so many pipes that you can fly things in and out on, you can use cut drapes to give that depth. Um, let's see, what's next? Oh yes, how do we hang a curtain, right? What's the deal with that, okay? So when we're installing any of these curtains, we are typically, uh, at the top edge of any piece 
of uh, scenic drapes or drops. There will be a piece of webbing and it will have grommets that reinforce the holes and it'll have tie line ties um, that will allow you to attach and move it um, from pipe to pipe. So that can be in two different scenarios, right? So you can have curtains that fly on a fly system um, or you can have curtains that are dead hung on a pipe that doesn't move. But in either of those cases, the way that we attach the drop to the pipe is tying a piece of tie line around the pipe in a bow. We always tie in a bow because over time that knot tightens. And if you just tie a knot instead of a bow, you'll never be able to get the curtain down. You'll have to cut it off and replace the tie line and everybody will be grouchy. So we tie bows so that we can move it or change it later. Um, when we're hanging a piece of a curtain on, for example, on the main stage, right? We would measure from the center line out to where that curtain is indicated to start on the plans. And there's like a line set schedule. I'll talk about that in a second when I talk about scenic drafting. So that information we measure from the center to where the curtain begins. And then you tie the bows across until you run out of curtain or you run out of pipe. Um, and that is the game plan. We'll also talk about how the order that we do those steps when we're talking about fly systems in a minute in the next slideshow. So another important, side, important piece of drop management, right, is folding your curtains, okay? So to fold a drop, we uh, we start by putting the drop down on the stage floor. Well, we start by sweeping the stage because we want we want to keep our drops clean because you can't launder them. It would ruin the fire retardant. Um, so in order to use scenery and especially curtains and fabric in a theatrical setting, it has to be fireproofed or fire have a fire retardant coating to it. That means you can't throw it in the laundry which means we have to keep it as clean as possible for as long as possible um, over the life of the drop. So we always clean the floor first, then we, un we unfurl the drop uh, fuzzy side up. So I'm talking about a velour drop, right? Or if it's a painted drop, painted side up typically, okay? And you get a whole bunch of your friends together. You make a little, a little team of curtain folders and you fold the whole thing in half in half again until it becomes a little burrito. And then once it's a nice tight burrito, you fold it up from the bottom. Okay. So, and this is, this is again, sort of what that looks like bottom to the top. The idea is right. That in either of these cases, your final folded drop will have the webbing visible at the top. And with that webbing visible at the top, you'll be able to see the standardized labeling so that when you have that drop either on a shelf or living in a hamper, often they'll live in hampers um, so they can be moved around like giant, giant hampers. Um, but you want to be able to open that hamper, look at, that webbing and see exactly how what size that drop is what which which piece of curtain it is without unfolding it all the way um, and that's why we fold up to leave that webbing visible so that you can see where you're going um, so there's one other way that we manage curtains um, so this is how we would prep and store a velour curtain or a painted drop, anything like that. Um, the other way uh, that curtains are often managed, right, is called West Coasting. And this is something that we use mostly with like a scrim because it uh, is not, because we don't want to stretch it out, right? We don't want to distort the, uh, the loosely woven material. And in order to do that, and also because the wrinkles will shake out of it much more easily, um, and it tends to be stretched in its final form, we west coast a scrim 
And the way that that works is you have it tied on the batten, okay? And you go across and you skip however many ties and then you tie around the scrim itself. You bunch the whole thing up like a sausage, you undo a tie, tie it underneath in order to maintain that spot. Um, and then you end up with this nice long sausage of, of scrim that you can um, put into a hamper and take out and it's not folded folded but it is sort of scrunched up into that way so that's called west coasting um, you can also do that if you're again if you're in a space that doesn't have a fly system right so if you're in a situation where you can't fly a scrim out that's also a way you could store it right so if you don't want it if you don't want it to be used in the show but you have no place to fly it out you can also just tie it up to the batten, to the pipe, in order to store it safely. Um, so yeah, that's West Coasting. And ta-da, we are done with soft goods. Thanks. <laughs>